Welcome to the Tuesday edition of Wands World, another episode in chameleon cooking. And today's an interesting day when I'm actually doing the videography that it is, is Monday. It's Plow Monday. Plow Monday is traditionally the Monday after Epiphany in England. And was celebrated fairly consistently in East Ang Anglia, places like Norfolk, Suffolk, and so forth. And there are many dance traditions associated with Plow Monday, but also a few cooking traditions. And one of them that I indulged in for many, many years is Norfolk pudding. And here's a picture of a Norfolk pudding I made when I was living in Buenos Aires. It's like um, steak and kidney pudding or any of the meat puddings that have a suet crust around the outside that is steamed. And I can't get suet in Cambodia. Uh, I've tried and tried, not a chance. Uh, but this time I was able to make one using the duck fat instead of suet. Duck fat from the duck I made earlier on that I showed you. Uh, wassail duck, that was last week. So today I'm going to do my version of Norfolk pudding, this time just using every single pork product I could possibly find in the supermarket. And let's get cooking. So let me just run down my ingredients here. I went to the supermarket yesterday, got some pork products. That was my idea. Let's just see what pork I can find. Found pork belly, very common here. Uh, not so common in, um, in the United States, but uh, in Asian countries, very common. I wanted to get some chopped pork, but they didn't have any, so I've got a pork chop, which I will chop up myself. <laughs> Chopped chop. Uh, very strangely Chinese. Some bacon uh, cured in Cambodia. A French style of sausage, but um, also cured in Cambodia. Here is the wild card. Pork kidneys. I'm not sure what these are going to do to the whole thing, but that's the essence of being a chameleon cook is just seeing what the combinations are like. I think it'll be okay. Um, kind of not like steak and kidney pie, pork and kidney pie, very strange. Ham, uh, also locally cured. And there's my pudding basin with uh, the onion inside and my sage. Let me just get that in focus. So, because it's going to be sage and onion as the uh, seasonings for the pork. Uh, let's get into it. Okay, so we can get started with the onions. I've chopped the onion quite fine and turn on the heat. I'm going to to sweat the onion a little bit, and there's a lot of onion. Because that's our primary seasoning with the sage. Okay. 
don't want to brown them. Just want to sweat them a little bit, make them translucent. Using high heat. Okay, I'm going to let them sweat for a few minutes and I'll come back and put in the pork. Alright, so the onions are doing their thing. Uh, and then I'm just going to put in a little bit of pork, chopped up pork. Now this I am going to brown off a little bit because I, I, want, I want to just cut, caramelize. Surface. A little bit more oil. Nicely. Now I'm going to just work on various other ingredients. I'm going to move these from the pan. And then I'm going to saute off each ingredient as I have the look. So now I'm going to try out the uh, bacon and the pork belly. Try in this case means to render the fat. The pork belly and the bacon have a lot of fat in them and I want to get rid of some of it, not all of it, and anyway, when I try it out, that's when I render it out, I'm probably going to be able to use some of it in the um, crust. We'll see. So I've got it on low heat because I don't want to crisp anything. Gonna let it do its thing on low heat. The fat will slowly render out. Bacon is usually made from pork belly, so it's really like pork belly and pork belly. So the bacon is, in this case, brined and smoked. So I'm just adding a little bit of different flavor. Okay, I'm gonna let that do its thing and we will return in a few minutes. Alright, you can see the uh, fat has rendered out very nicely here. So I'm going to add that to my pot of cooked materials. And next is the sausage. I took the casing off the sausage because it looked like it was some kind of artificial casing. If it had been pork intestine, I would have left it, but uh, it looked like it, so I've uh, taken it off. Now I'm going to just uh, chop it a little bit and uh, we'll cook that also. 
So sausage meat next. It's probably going to be a little clumpy, so I'm going to cook it and then break it up a little bit. I'm not cooking anything very thoroughly because it's going to ultimately be in the pudding and steaming for uh, several hours. So it's going to cook thoroughly inside, but I want to just get everything at least browned off a little bit uh, beforehand. Okay, well you can see that I'm Getting this nice and chopped and sauteed. Broken up a little bit. And of course no skin, so we're going to blend nicely with the other ingredients. It's going to be the kidney, my wild card. Really have no idea what that's going to do. We shall see. and a little bit of hot pepper. make a, a lot more gravy to serve with it. Alright, that's done. Into the pot. So all the meats are out of the skillet and I put a little bit of stock in just to simmer and I've added a little bit of pepper and a little bit of red pepper to the stock and just going to then turn off the heat let it cool a little bit and add to my meat mixture this is the uh, pot with all the meats mixed up together having sauteed them and add a little bit of broth to moisten otherwise it'd be a little bit too dry and you'll see also 
that I am going to add sage. And here in the pot you can see I've added a ton of sage because I really want to have that permeate the pork considerably. So now I'm going to finish up the filling by adding some flour just to thicken the juices a little bit inside the pudding so that there's an internal gravy. I'm also going to make another gravy using the remains of what's in the pan, but I want a little bit of thickness here. Now I'm going to just toss it all together and there's my filling done. And the next thing I'm going to do is to turn to the pastry or the dough that's going to go around it. And I'm going to use slack paste or hot water paste, which is normally a pastry dough, but I'm going to use it for steaming simply because I don't have any suet, can't get it in Cambodia. And so I'm going to be using the duck fat from my duck recipe that I did a week or so ago. And so it's basically flour and duck fat. And we'll get on with that next. So here are my preliminaries before making the casing, the dough casing for the pudding. I've got some duck fat <laughs> in black and white because I was playing around with my camera. It's a nice photo, I think. I have lined a pudding basin with aluminium foil and I've measured out three cups of flour. Now let's get into the actual process of making the dough and making the completed pudding. Okay, so here is the slightly tricky part. I've got one cup of duck fat from the roast duck and a third of a cup of water. I'm heating them up. I want to melt the fat, mix it with the water, and then I'm going to dump everything into the three cups of flour. And very quickly, I'm going to turn it into a dough and then I'm going to roll it out. I'm not going to be able to photograph most of it um, in video, but I'll, I'll take some, some stills and we'll see where we're at. Okay, fired up and ready to go. Got a few interlopers in the fat. I didn't realize a few pieces of uh, uh, leek and onion there. Well, all right, so straight in. really hot. Just going to combine the fat and the flour. Complete opposite of what you're normally told for making pastry. Normally you're told to cool everything. You can put your hands in the freezer if you have to. Now this is really, really hot. But as soon as it's able to be touched. I'm going to knead it and then I'm going to take it out and roll it out a little bit. It's still just a tiny bit too hot for me right now. It's coming together nicely though. Doesn't look like it. Looks like it's all crumbly and not working out, but it's it's actually working out very well. I just gotta get it cool enough that I can press it together to form a ball and I'll take it and roll it out. Okay, it's coming together really nicely. I'm just gonna knead it a little bit more and there's still a bit of extra flour that I can Incorporate and it's still kind of hot. I don't want to let it get too cool because then it will not uh, 
work very well. Okay. And there's a little bit of remaining flour, that's okay. It's coming together nicely. I'm going to divide off enough to form the top. a little bit. I can I can pat it into shape pretty much. I don't have a rolling pin. Not a great help. But I have a port bowl. I'll work on that. That's just fine. Neatness does not count. done this in about 20 years. Okay, now you can see that it's pretty well forming a cake basin. Just sort of add a little bit more over here. Smooth out everywhere, all around. Now I shall get my filling. Just roll out the lid. 
<coughs> Hope I don't have the same kind of disaster. The lid's a little bit trickier. Let's go fit without falling apart. See, I put some of the filling in to, to pretty much fill up to the top. I've, I've left a little bit so that I can curl it round. And I'm going to now add the top and crimp it down, but I'm break it. And then cover with the foil so that I can then steam it. And I've got a little bit of, um, of the filling left over, which is great because I've also got some other pastries which I'm going to fry and we'll see how the filling works out in terms of being cooked. So let's just see if this time I can get the top on without disaster. this time. What I have to do is make sure that it's all tight. so that if the suet, I mean the uh, <coughs> dumpling crust isn't quite tight enough, it doesn't really matter because the foil will take care of that. So it's just going to fold over the foil. Here's the putting in the steamer. I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to steam for, I don't know, two hours maybe. Uh, two or three hours. We'll see. I want to make sure that the dumpling crust is cooked and also that the filling is cooked. So the pudding is steaming away and while it's steaming over here on the other burner I'm making some gravy this is the juice from cooking the pork a little bit more um, stock added and a few more seasonings and mushrooms and leeks so that together the pudding and the gravy will be a complete meal vegetables and carbohydrates protein the whole thing now we just have to wait two hours in the end, I decided to let it steam for three hours. Not entirely sure why, although I did check an old recipe book that I used to trust, and it said 
steam puddings for three to four hours and I thought, oh, okay, why not? So I steamed it for three, even though two probably would have worked just as well. And here's the finished product just opened up. The top looks a bit lumpy. Um, that's all right because um, it all goes down the same way as my mother used to say. And here it is turned out. Uh, it's caramelized a little bit, nicely browned. So then I added the gravy on top, more to make a nice picture than anything else. And here's the pie, or the pudding I should say, cut open, uh, looks absolutely gorgeous, and plated up with some gravy was delicious. Very complex flavor of the fresh pork and the smoked and cured uh, pork sausage and bacon and the kidneys and the sage which had permeated everything thoroughly and the onions and a little, little tiny bit of heat from black and red pepper. So all in all, a great success. Now I had some filling left over and I decided I would just make it into a regular pie. So just put some shortcut pastry in a pastry dish filled it up, sealed it up, baked it, and here also is that result, the chameleon cook at work. I could have also used the filling in empanadas, pasties, uh, anything you can f name really. So I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you will like and subscribe and tell all your friends and I'll see you on Friday for a little bit more of my rambling about how my interpretation of the Bible works.